You can call it a step through. You can even call it a mixty. But it is not a girl's bike. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Um, As you might suspect, I want to talk to you a little bit today about the Rivendell Platypus. Quite a bit of buzz going on about this bike. And look, I know that you know it's not just a girl's bike. But there might be some new people out there in the audience. Uh, Casual viewers, uninitiated lurkers. And if you're out there, welcome. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Why not subscribe? <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a there's quite a bit of buzz going on uh, about this new bicycle, which, I mean, it's a new bike, technically, I suppose. Um, and I feel a little bad about calling this uh, a parking lot test ride. One, because the bike's not here. Uh, I think that thing was spirited out of the shop about 30 minutes after I finished it. And given the amount of time that the customer had waited uh, for said bicycle, I don't blame him. Not one bit. Uh, Also, it's technically not the size that I would ride, if I'm honest. Um... Bike comes in three sizes, 50, 55, and 60. Uh, The bike that I had assembled and and got a chance to ride around a little bit was the 50. Now, you know, one, if my torso was not, was the same, you know, appropriate length for the length of my legs, it likely would be my size. And at this point, I've ridden just about every Rivendell. And I owned a Chevy for three years, the bike that this, the platypus essentially replaces. So, you know, why replace the Chevy at all? And the uh, reason that I was given was that the Chevy used caliper brakes and there was really only one brake that would work with that frame and it was the Tektro 559 caliper and Grant was concerned that that brake may get discontinued at which point you know that would render that frame essentially useless Um, and then while he was at it he got his pencil out and tweaked it a little bit more made the chain stays even yet a little longer um and then decided that it was different enough from the Chevy at that they should just rename it. And he, they named it Platypus because Grant can do whatever he wants, clearly. Um, they don't, you know, if we want to talk about numbers, which I don't do a whole lot, but I decided it might be instructive. They haven't listed any geometry numbers for the platypus yet, but I can't imagine that they're too far off uh, from what the Chevy it was. And as memory serves, that Chevy it was, you know, 69 degree head tube angle, 72 degree C tube angle. So kind of what you would expect. Uh, and the low bottom bracket, also what you would expect. And that's going to give you that, what I call kind of atypical Rivendell ride, uh, where it feels like you're kind of sitting down in the bike. Um, you know, it's not going to give you snappy turns, but it is going to let you carve turns. Just make sure that that inside pedal isn't down, uh, or you might end up with a surprise. So what does this mean for the, you know, how does that change the bike? Well, the biggest thing is, is that by going to a a linear pull brake or a V brake from a caliper, 
one, it's going to open up a lot more options uh, for brakes. And two, it's going to give you some more tire clearance. I want to say that the max tire on that Chevy, it was, well, I ran 42s on mine, and it, the clearance, there wasn't much more clearance than that. Uh, going to a V-brake has basically opened that up, so you can run up to a 50-millimeter tire. The one that I built, I used uh, Terravail Ramparts, which were 47s. That's going to be real nice, nice and cushy. Um, the 700C bike goes to, or the 55-centimeter bike goes from 650B wheels to 700C wheels. Uh, it would have been nice to be able to ride that to see how that differed uh, from the Cheviot. But apparently, uh, Rivendell sold out of 50s and 55s in like six minutes. I may not have that exactly right, but it was minutes. Those, those things were gone. Um, and once I put the few frames that I had pre-ordered on the website, they were gone in less than 24 hours. So it does lead me to wonder, I mean, part of this obviously is that there's just a shortage, right? And people are looking for bikes. I think it says something else when a company like Rivendell that has largely flown under the radar for as long as I've been aware of them uh, sells out of a, a step-through frame that is, you know, let's be honest, not inexpensive, $1,650 for frame, fork, headset, bottom bracket, seat post in a matter of minutes. So certainly that's partly the bike shortage, and but there's something else going on. I mean, that's just what my gut tells me. So how does the bike ride? Well, it rides exactly like I would expect a Rivendell to ride. Stable, uh, not sluggish. You know, these bikes have incredibly long for their size, effective top two blanks, they're built with the idea that you're going to put a, you know, some kind of a swept back bar, Albatross, Billy, Bosco, something like that, which is going to eat up some of that, that room between you and the handlebars. Um, what I've always found is that it, you can set them up very upright, but you can also set them up uh, you know, I hate to use the word, but a little racier, right? You can achieve kind of the best of both worlds where you can get back on the bars and sit up if you need to, but you can also uh, extend, you know, depending on the bar you use, the, the outer portion of the bar so that you can get a little bit of a lower uh, handlebar position or more stretched out handlebar position is probably the better way to put that. Um, it just gives you a lot of options. Look, that Chevy, it was uh, level pegging with my old Toyo A. Homer Hilson for the nicest riding bike that I had ever ridden. If you're looking for something that uh, you can just spend all day riding around the uh, pavement, bike paths, bike trails, you know, you want to put a little bit of weight on it. You can load it up to 30 pounds. Um, the tire width obviously is going to make it, uh, possible to ride some dirt roads or fire trails. And you want something that is maybe a little bit easier to get on and off. I mean, it's really a pretty ideal bike. Now, how's it look? It's beautiful. It's a beautiful bike. They did two colors. They did a lime olive, which is great. And the one that I got to assemble was what they called Mermaid. And it's a gorgeous bike. It's got lugs in all the right places. Uh, I think the only difference with the Cheviot is that that junction where the 
the top tube meets the seat tube. There was a lug there, which uh, is gone, but uh, there are lugs everywhere else. Um, you know, rack and fender bosses. It's a gorgeous bike. It really is. Now, why would you buy a platypus? Well, if, if you want to do uh, the aforementioned riding, great option. Those bikes, I've said it a million times, ride like no other bikes. I've yet to ride a bike. The closest thing that I ever rode to a Rivendell was uh, a Velo Orange Polyvalent an old version of the polyvalent. I haven't ridden any of the new ones. But they're just marvelous riding bicycles. And if you want something that, uh, you know, why would you buy the step-through version instead of something like a Sam Hillborn, which is a very, very similar bike? Well, if you're like me and you need extra space between you and the handlebars... Um, you know, I can't ride a 55 centimeter Sam or a 55 centimeter Appaloosa or even a 53 centimeter Atlantis. Um, I'm in that 51, 52 range to get the standover clearance, to get any standover clearance. And it's, those bikes just are not long enough. So when I got that Chevy, it I could ride the 55. I obviously didn't have any standover clearance issues. And the top tube, there was a gang of top tube space. And it just fit me better. That's the bottom line. The bad news is, they're, unless you can ride a 60, they're all gone. Every single one of them we probably will not see anymore until, boy... 2022, and I would say chances are late 2022. There is some talk about them offering a complete, uh, kind of like they do with the Clem. Uh, the good news is, is that I don't think it's going to change for a while, other than the color. It's just a great riding bike. It really is. Um, and I hope uh, if you're interested, you get an opportunity to ride one sooner rather than later. Thanks, as always, for watching. I really appreciate it. I, uh, the comments are great. Uh, the comments on the last video were unexpected because it never fails. Those videos that I upload that I think are going to be dogs are the ones that y'all seem to really like. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about me. Um, yeah, questions, comments, put them below. Till next time, be nice, work hard, ride bikes, play music when you can. I'll talk to you soon.